Okay, let's try this again. So this is uh, Jeff, Tito Jeff's life experience. And I'm back again. I'm just going to do a little vlog, do a little talking today, and uh, talk about my life a little bit. So um, I live in Kentucky. I'm a chemist. And I work at the Bluegrass Army Depot in Richmond where we destroy chemical weapons as part of a treaty that the United States is part of. Uh, some of the weapons have been stored there since World War II. Um, and uh, up until 1966, I think they were still making chemical weapons. Uh, so most of them have been sitting around a long time. And they're no good anyhow. But we got to get rid of them. And we have to show the world that we've gotten rid of them. So that's part of the project that I work on. I collect... I don't collect. Uh, we have technicians who collect air samples around the work areas, and uh, they bring them to the laboratory, and that's part of my job is to analyze air samples. Also, we analyze some waste stream samples, and uh, it's it's a challenging job sometimes, not so much because of the, the type of work, but uh, because of the schedule. So I work what's called a DuPont schedule. I work 14, 12-hour shifts per month. So it goes something like this. So I start on Monday through Thursday, night shift, from 6 p.m. till 6.30 a.m. Then I'm off until Monday morning. That's three days, or two and a half, because I sleep Friday. Then um, I go to work Monday morning, 6 a.m. till 6.30 p.m., Tuesday and Wednesday. I'm off on Thursday. Then I work... Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night, 6 p.m. to 6.30 a.m. Then I'm off Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And then I work Thursday through Sunday day shift, 6 a.m. to 6.30 p.m., 12-hour shifts. And then on uh, the following week, I am off. So once a month, I have seven days off, a week off every month, which can be fun. And uh, it's been useful. So when I first uh, heard about the job, I was called by a recruiter. And I was looking for a job because uh, um, I had tried to go back and finish a Ph.D. in chemistry, but that wasn't working because my parents were elderly and they were both getting pretty seriously sick. And I needed to be able to take care of them. So this recruiter called me and said, hey, Jeff, we've got this job and it's down in Richmond. And it is shift work. And I almost hung up on them. Uh, I didn't really want to work shifts. And uh, I said, well, be nice. Be polite. And then I also happened to think, you, you big dummy, you need a job. So don't be so picky. So they explained the, the schedule to me. And it's like, ding, ding, ding. Aha, uh -huh, this is good. This is good for taking care of elderly parents uh, where I can take them to the doctor and not have to miss work. I don't have to be going to the boss all the time and saying, hey, I need to take my mom to the doctor. I need to take off work. And uh, so it was good for that. And uh, I was able to take care of my parents and uh, 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 on my time off. And sometimes I had to uh, be with them with and miss work, but not too much. So it was a good schedule for that. So then Dad passed away in 2017. And mom passed away last, uh, well, 2020 uh, in April, just at the beginning of the pandemic, not from COVID, but uh, she was in a nursing home and she was declining pretty rapidly. She had COPD. So when mom passed away, uh, well, then, you know, that frees up a lot of time. And then the pandemic comes along and that seven days off um, during the pandemic was just terrible sometimes because there was nothing to do. Everything was shut down, so I'd come home and sit all week by myself. Uh, I'm single, live alone. And uh, so that's that's been kind of a, in the last couple of years, it's not been all that great, uh, a schedule to work because of the shifting back and forth between days and nights, your circadian rhythm, uh, uh, your sleep clock gets all messed up, and I feel tired a lot, even on my seven days off. So... Uh, that's the tough part of the job, and I, I'm always finding ways to deal with that. So I'm pretty good about sleep discipline. So when I get home from work, uh, I leave work at about 6.30. I get home about 10 after 6, about 7.30, 10 after 7. Um, I get home at about 10 after 7. Then by 7.30, quarter to 8, I'm in bed. And I sleep 
till about six, three thirty. I say sleep. I wake up two or three times a night uh, uh, to go take care of business, but I go back to sleep pretty easily. Uh, but my sleep gets interrupted, and so that's not good. And then I wake up at three thirty in the morning on day shift, or three thirty in the afternoon on night shift. And uh, three thirty in the morning, getting up even on day shift is just about as bad as working night shift, I think. And I do that because I have, I leave, that leaves me, um, I have to leave myself at least about 50 minutes to get to work. It's a long drive. It can be sometimes. Plus, I can't just get up and go. I get up, I got to mill around for a minute, make some coffee, cook some breakfast. Um, while I'm eating breakfast, sometimes I, I do a little Bible reading, um, check out the news. And when I'm finished, uh, I might play my guitar. I talk to my fiance. Maricel, who lives in, I love Maricel forever, Maricel lives in the Philippines, and we chat on Messenger, Facebook Messenger, and uh, so that's a good time to talk to her uh, on day shift, no, night shift, because at 3.30 in the afternoon, it's 3.30, well, I'm getting it backwards, see, I'm confused all the time, I don't even want to know what, what day it is, about half the time because this the shift works. So if I get up at 3.30 in the morning, it's 3.30 in the afternoon there. So on day shift, when I wake up at 3.30 in the morning, I can video chat with Marisol. When I'm working night shift, um, I usually wait until uh, I pull in the parking lot at work and I, I give her a video chat there. So anyhow, it's kind of a tough job just because of the schedule. Um, I'm one of the older guys there, and I probably do better with it than the kids do sometimes, the young people in their 20s, because when they get off work, they want to go hang out with their friends or go to the gym. Some of them have children, my wife, you know, they've got to take care of that, you know, those responsibilities. I mean, no pets, just, just Jeff. I come home, flop down in the bed, and uh, get some sleep. So... Uh, I went for about 20 years with no caffeine until I started this shift. From 1996 till about 20, actually 2017 or 28, 2018, I did not consume any products with caffeine. So since then, I've started back. And uh, I drink Cafe Bustelo in the morning. Cafe Bustelo, I like that. The dark roast caffeine content's a little lower because it's roasted so much, and uh, some of the caffeine will decay during the roasting process. So, but during the pandemic, I have lost, uh, currently I'm down about 46 pounds. I have been down as much as 65 pounds, 63 pounds, something like, somewhere in there. So recently I've gained back some weight, um, not just because of the holidays, but anyhow, uh, so I need to get back on that. But during the pandemic, I didn't eat out. Uh, I met this girl, Maricel. I got engaged. I cared more about myself. I was able to diet better and uh, lost a bunch of weight. Feel better. And I need to get back on it because I can, I can do a lot better if I lose probably another 30 pounds. One of the ways I do that, I drink uh, lemonade. I make lemonade at home. Yeah. Lemon juice concentrate. I just take some of that, put it in here about about that much in the bottom of this. This is about a 20 ounce cup, I think. And then I add some artificial sweetener. I just tried this stuff, sweet leaf stevia. It took about nine packets. I don't think I'm going to use that because it's expensive. I use the yellow packets, the sucralose, and that works pretty good. About four or five packets. And that keeps me off the soda, soda pop, which is expensive. Um, it's not much to it, especially um, if you're drinking decaf or diet soda. So I just drink this lemonade. It's good for me. Um, sometimes I have kidney stones. My urologist wants me to drink lemonade for that, so there we go. I try to eat a lot of bananas. Keep my potassium up, and um, it's a nice, healthy snack. I eat 
nuts, mixed nuts, and I try to mostly eat vegetables with a little bit of meat. The way I lost weight, I did several different kinds of diets. Everybody says, well, you got to do this to lose weight. Well, there's no, there's no magic diet for losing weight. What you have to do is consume fewer calories than you burn. I suppose you could eat ice cream only, an ice cream only diet. As long as you don't consume more calories than you burn, you'll lose weight. <laughs> You're not going to feel like crap, but you know, just eating ice cream. But it's, it's possible, I guess. I haven't tried that diet, don't want to. But I uh, mostly, uh, I did keto, I did low carb, I did vegetarian for about three months. Um, and what else have I done? I guess that's it. That's the main thing. But mostly, um, I do better when I eliminate I, I, when I eliminate sugar, and that's hard to do. I can get a sweet tooth, um, and it's hard to avoid because it's in a lot of things that you don't see. Um, and then people bring stuff to work. That's the hard part. Um, I have been overweight for a long time. And really the hardest thing to overcome was the psychological challenge of losing weight, changing the way I think about food. So some people say, well, I get depressed, I eat. Some people say, you know, I get depressed, I don't eat. Well, for me, there's no not eating. I eat when I'm happy, I eat when I'm sad, I eat when I'm uh, neutral. <laughs> so uh, I like to eat. It tastes good. It feels good. It feels good. Sometimes I eat just to feel good, and that's that's one thing you got to get over. Another thing was I learned a lot of habits from my family. Uh, clean your plate. A lot of people uh, have learned that. Clean your plate. There, children starving in China. Uh, so sometimes I had to push away the plate uh, and leave food on there. And it's like, oh man, this is wrong. This is bad. Um, if I can, I'll just wrap it up and put it in the fridge and eat it later. Uh, that's another bad thing about going to restaurants. Uh, a lot of restaurants, the portions are so huge. And uh, you, know, you go there for fun. You eat out for fun, so you eat all the food. Uh, some other little things were um, that my dad was a, a Baptist preacher. And... Uh, Sometimes in the summer, I would run around with Dad when school was out, and I would go um, to visit people in the hospital. He would go visit his church members in the hospital. Sometimes he was going to a seminary in Louisville. I would go with him to the seminary and hang out on campus while he was in class. And when we finished anything like that, when we finished classes, when we finished going to the uh, hospital to visit people, when we... Uh, uh, finished going shopping for clothes, whatever it was. When we finished a task, we went and ate. Even if we were going to eat when we got home. And so I built up that habit. I, I recognized it one day when I was working in Nicholasville. I went home, uh, excuse me, I went to work. I had breakfast at home, went to work. 9.30, I had a doctor's appointment. When I finished, oh, let's go get drive through at McDonald's, let's get breakfast, get sausage. Biscuit, I have two of them. <laughs> and I said, you know, I'm not doing this because I'm hungry. I don't need to eat. I'm doing this because this is a habit. I, I recognize this habit that I'm, I have. So I have to break habits. That's the hardest part. And uh, sometimes telling yourself, okay, I feel hungry. I want to eat, but I really don't need to. So just let's just stop and pause and think for a minute. And a lot of time that feeling goes away. Sometimes it doesn't, um, but I still have to deal with it and, and get over it. So I'm glad I lost weight. I need to get back on it, and uh, I did feel a lot better when I was down about another 10 to 15 pounds a couple of months ago. So that's that's uh, part of my life. Uh, I'll talk about life some more, I guess. I don't want to bore you too much, but... Um, it's uh, and I've got a, I'm, I keep I've told this in another video. I just bought a car. I bought um, a 2004 Jaguar XJS. 
no, XJ8. I'm sorry, XJ8. And I really like this car. It's good. only got 70,000 miles on it. And it's fun to drive, and I'm probably going to get a ticket. <laughs> so I'll make a video about the car um, and some more uh, sardine videos. Some of you like those. Some more videos about Lexington and things to see here. And uh, maybe some cooking. I'll do a cooking uh, episode. Um, show you some of my favorite things to cook that help me lose weight. Uh, something you just whip up in a skillet in about 10 or 15 minutes. And for a bachelor guy like me, that's, that's important. I don't have to spend a lot of time cooking. So I guess that's about it. I'll sign off here on Tito Jeff's Life Experience. And ask you again to uh, like the video if you liked it. If you don't like it, click the dislike button. That's fine. Just let me know in the comments what you think. Uh, subscribe. Uh, I'd like to get my subscribers up if you if you like helping me out there. And if you really like want to see more of my videos, press the notification button. And that'll be it for today. And thanks a lot for watching.